Hello all, good morning. Welcome to the AWS Reskill Learning Session. Today we are going to learn about AWS AppStream 2.0. Before we begin, let me introduce myself. My name is Samuel K. Abraham. I am a Senior Manager with Accenture. I specialize in application and desktop virtualization and in cloud migrations. I am a Solution Architect Associate and SysOps Administrator Associate certified in AWS. If you have any queries related to the session, please feel free to reach out to me in Twitter or LinkedIn. With that, let us kick start. So what is AWS AppStream 2.0? AppStream is a fully managed application virtualization or application streaming service from AWS, which allows the admins to deliver both published application as well as non-persistent desktop to end users. And these desktops and application can be accessed from anywhere in the globe. AWS AppStream is secure by default. The pixels are encrypted. You have scales on demand option, which actually make the AWS AppStream a cool feature because as the load increase it will automatically scale. AWS AppStream 2.0 leverages nice DCV protocol for its streaming purpose. Before we dig deep dive into AWS AppStream, let us basically discuss about application virtualization. So what is application virtualization? In a traditional world, you install softwares in your laptop or desktop and you access it. But let us assume that you need your software to be securely accessed in a data center or you need your software to be accessed only when you are in a corporate network or you are running a sensitive software which need to be which should prevent copying data from your application to your endpoint. So how you achieve all this? That's where your application virtualization come into picture. In an application virtualization solution, you will install your application in, in a server which is located in your data center. And with the use of a streaming gateway or a streaming server, you will stream this application to your endpoint device. You will use an application virtualization client to access these published applications. The market leaders in application virtualization are Citrix and App, VMware Horizon. However, when the COVID hit, AWS AppStream actually become popular among multiple companies. What is AWS AppStream 2.0 workflow looks like? So, as I mentioned, in an application virtualization, you first install your application in a remote server. So, similarly, you will install your application in a server. You will convert that into an image and then you basically create a couple of servers. You integrate your application with your storage solutions. You basically integrate with your identity management and then use the AWS AppStream or the nice DCV protocol to stream those applications securely to the end users. What all are the use cases for AWS AppStream? While there are multiple use cases from multiple industries in for AWS AppStream, the most relevant one is during the COVID time. When the COVID hit, many companies leverages AWS AppStream to publish a bastion host or a remote desktop to the end users. So they will basically connect to that bastion host machine and from there they are in the corporate network they can access their corporate application. The other key use case for AppStream is <clears throat> AppStream can be used for 3D application. Let us assume that you have a business who basically install AutoCAD in their laptop, so you need to provide graphics card based laptops and desktops to these users. Rather, you install it in 
AWS servers and the users can access it from any device whether it can be a mobile or or it can be a laptop uh, a loan laptop or a desktop etc you have a wide variety of use cases for AWS AppStream let us basically discuss about the AppStream components. The first component is AWS Fleet. So AWS Fleet consists of streaming servers or instances which basically contains your application. There are three kind of fleets. You have always on fleet which as the name mentioned it will be always on so you are instances will be charged because it is running 24 by 7 however when a user access the application it will be spontaneous on-demand instances or on-demand fleet instances in the other side they will have the VMs in, a, in the stop mode and when a user access it it will start that particular application so there will be a slight delay in accessing the application Elastic fleets are the new type of streaming instances. So rather than you install your application into some streaming server, you publish those application as a VHD file. So you convert your application into a VHD file, you save it in an S3 bucket and stream it to end users. So you are actually going serverless in the AWS app stream. Then comes your stack. A stack consists of the fleet, it contains the user access policies and the storage configurations. So stack is nothing but it's basically a combination of your fleet, then the policies and what are the storage uh, we need to provide to the user when a, a application is getting accessed. The next thing is image builder. As the name suggests it is to basically create the image or build the image right so what is a basically an image you have two types of images one is the AWS provided public images or you can create your own custom image when you create your own custom image what will happen is your users or these fleets will have these custom image and custom applications so that's the use of image builder then comes your user pools you can actually publish your applications via SAML or via user pools so user pool is basically to manage the user and the access to the stacks now let us basically go to the AWS AppStream 2.0 architecture in this architecture you can basically see that in the AWS cloud you have two different VPCs one is the AppStream VPC which is managed by AWS and then you have your customer VPCs the streaming gateway the fleet and the image builders locate in the AppStream 2.0 VPC the customer VPC contain the ENIs of these fleets because it is your environment it contains the S3 bucket where the usage reports the user persistence data etc is getting saved it contains your monitoring software like CloudWatch and and the other AWS services which you use with the AWS app stream in a traditional architecture a user sitting anywhere in the globe access the app stream URL via the web URL or via the client they will get authenticated using SAML or user pool once they get authenticated the streaming gateway will ch check whether the user is having any application if the user is entitled to any application then that particular application will get, in, get streamed to the user <coughs> once the application gets streamed it also connects to the third party storage integrations whatever we configured in the fleet for example if we configured OneDrive for business or we, we configure the uh, Google Drive then you can basically map all those drives when, when your application is getting launched what is the traditional workflow for App, App Stream 2.0 from an admin point of view the first thing you need to do is you need to basically create a machine 
and you need to install the softwares whatever you needed you need to customize it and you do all these in your image builder once you done with that you convert that machine to an AWS AppStream image once the image is created then you will create fleets or your streaming instances from that custom image now you have your fleet ready the next step is you need to create stacks so you will basically associate the fleet the the user configuration and the storage configuration and then publish or assign these stacks to multiple users so that is the workflow of AWS AppStream 2.0 for an admin point of view let us now see AWS AppStream 2.0 in action so here I am in the AWS console. You can search AppStream 2.0 in the search or it is available in the end user computing services. I already accessed AppStream 2.0 so I will basically click on it. Here I am in the AppStream 2.0 console. You can see that App <coughs> sorry, AppStream 2.0 is not available in all the regions. It is available in the core regions in in every physical Amazon region the first step we need to do is we need to basically create a fleet so I will click on create fleet as I mentioned you have three kind of fleets always on on-demand and elastic for this demo I will create an on-demand fleet I'll give a name for my fleet so I will say that fleet demo I will select my instance type so what is the instance the CPU RAM uh, which need to be used by the instance so I can basically select from general purpose to graphics to compute optimized anything I need so I will select general purpose for now then comes your user session details this is where your disconnect timeout ideal timeout and the maximum session duration is configured then comes your fleet capacity you can select the minimum capacity to the maximum capacity in the stream view details you can basically select with between application or desktop so if you are publishing only application then you select application for this demo I will select application you have the scaling details so you can basically scale out and scale in based on certain conditions and the conditions available are capacity utilization, available capacity, and inception capacity error. You can configure IAM roles which if needed. You can add tags. The next step is to select your image. As I mentioned, you have two kinds of images. One is a public image, one is a private image. Here, I will select the public image, and you can see that Amazon already published some applications in this particular image and this image is running on Windows Server 2012 the next step is to configure your network the next step is to configure your network so you need to select your internet access so I will basically enable the default internet access if you don't enable it then you need to configure NAT gateway you need to provide minimum two subnets this is to ensure that your fleet instances are created across multiple availability zones you have you can basically configure the active directory domain if you configure it then your fleets will get added to the active directory so once you complete your network then you basically need to click on create fleet which will take approximately 10 to 15 minutes for creating a fleet so I already have a fleet created the next step is to create a stack so I will go and create a stack I need to provide a name so I will say that demo stack you can provide a redirect URL or a feedback URL so for example if you have a feedback URL configured in your Microsoft Forms or Survey Monkey, then you can basically configure that feedback URL or if you want to basically redirect the user at the end of the session to your home uh, corporate home page then you can basically give that website you can associate your fleet 
can configure VPCN points. You can embed your app stream to Odoto. So when you embed your app, app stream to Odoto, you can basically have it in your website. You need to basically select your tags. You can configure tags and you click on next. The next step is to basically enable storage. So in the enable storage, you can see that you can configure home drives. The so home drives are basically the app stream S3 bucket. You can configure Google Drive. If you have a G Suite license, you can configure OneDrive. So I have OneDrive for business. I will configure that. The next step is to basically configure the user settings. So this is where your redirection policies like clipboard redirection, file transfers, printer redirection, etc. need to be configured. If you added your fleets to domain, you can configure password sign-in or smart code sign-in. You have application setting persistence. So if you basically want to have your streaming application settings to be persistent, then you can enable it. When you enable it, your persistent settings will go to an S3 bucket. You click on next and you basically click on create stack. I already have a stack pre-created here. So you have your fleets and stacks created. The next step is to configure the user pool. So I go to user pool. I need to create a new user. So I will click on create user. I can provide an email address and it can be any email address. I can configure this first name and last name. And if I click on create user, what will happen is that particular user will get a email notification with his user ID and temporary password. So I already have my user pre-created here. Once I pre-created the user, the next step I need to do is to assign the stack. So I will assign the stack. And I send a notification email. Now, from an end user point of view, if you go to his email, he will basically see that he will get a welcome to AWS AppStream 2.0 message with his user ID and his temporary password. And it will basically give you the URL to sign in. You can sign into AppStream via web URL or you can use the client. So the, the client can be downloaded from the AWS page. So I am logging into my AWS AppStream user login page. I successfully logged in and authenticated. I can see that there are two catalogs available for me. One is Linux catalog and one is my Windows catalog. And you can see multiple applications published to me. So if I click on Notepad, what will happen is because we selected on-demand instances, your instance will get started now. It will take some time, so I, need, I will pause the video. So my application is fully loaded, loaded now. You can see that a Notepad++ is opened. Now, if I want to switch this application to my thick client, I can do that. So what I need to do is I need to install the AppStream client. and I need to click on connect. You have two options. One is native application mode and the classic mode. In the native application mode, your AppStream 2.0 app streamed application works literally same like your standard application. You will not feel a difference between your installed application and the streamed application. Because I am using multiple monitors, maybe that's the reason it is 
giving me a display resolution error that's fine but my application is now switched to the classic mode however it is now running from my thick client compared to rather than running it from the HTML client let us go back to the AWS portal so now we learned about how to create a fleet how to create stack how to create a user in a user pool how to assign a user to the stack the next step we need to learn is about how to get the report of the utilization so you have usage reports here you can enable usage report and what it basically does is in a daily manner it will send all your logs as a csv file into an s3 bucket you have directory config so if you want to add your fleets to directory you can basically configure your directory here you can configure your domain the user id and the password to access the domain and then the ou where your feed fleet instances need to be saved you have application so this is basically for the elastic fleet if you have an application like a VST file then you can basically configure it here and the application will will be streamed via the elastic fleet instances the next step we need to see is how can we monitor AWS app stream so the AWS monitoring solution as we all know is CloudWatch so I'll go to CloudWatch you have multiple pre-built metrics available in AWS if I go to metrics you can see that AppStream has some 30 metrics already configured and if I click on view automatic dashboard here you can see that there are multiple dashboard items available or multiple metrics it is basically capturing and it is capturing based on the fleets which I created so I have created multiple fleet and you can basically filter it based on the fleet so uh, you can basically uh, get the capacity utilization the available capacity your running capacity etc based on these alerts or, or based on these metrics you can basically configure alarms and you can even configure actions to perform in the backend just go back to our AWS apps in Tudor token soul the last thing we need to learn about is the images so how do we create a custom image I'm in the images tab and you can basically see that image registry and image builder tabs in image registry you can basically see the public images which are created by AWS and there is a private image which is created by my account how do I create a custom image for my business so I go to image builder I click on launch image builder I need to select an image so I need to select a public image or a private image click on next you need to give a display name you need to configure your instance size you can configure IAM roles and VPC endpoints if needed you can configure whether you need your image builder to contact internet or not you can put your subnet and you can even add your image builder into Active Directory once everything is done you can basically click on launch image builder and the image builder will get created so I already pre-created one image builder instance I will select this and I will click on connect so you can see that the AWS app stream image builder is opened and here it is showing two options local user and other user so if I added my image builder instance to domain then I can basically log in as other user basically using my Active Directory credentials 
I log in as a local user and you can see that administrator user, template user and test user. So I log in as an admin user. Once I log into the image builder, the next thing I need to do is I need to install the software, whatever I need. So I already downloaded Putty application. I will install it. I installed my application. Once I installed my application and I completed my configuration settings, I will enable, click on the image assistance. What image assistant will do is it will allow you to basically publish that application. I need to select that application. You can give a display name, put it for the skill. The next step is if you want to have any configuration changes to your application, then you can basically switch user and login as a template user, then do your configuration changes. So I don't have any settings to do, so I'll click on next. The next thing is basically to test whether your application is functioning or not as a normal user. So I will just switch user and login as a test user. We will see if Putty is working as expected. So I logged in as a test user. I'll access Putty and it opened. The, so I am done with my testing. I'll switch user and I'll log in back as an administrator. The next step is to basically optimize the application and this is done by AWS. So I just need to click on launch. The, app, the application will get launched and you can basically click on continue once the application is launched. In the back end, it will optimize the app launch experience. Once it is done, you can give a name for your image. So I will give that the image. Once you click on disconnect and create image, what will happen is your image status will change from running to snapshotting and once your snapshot is getting created you can see that your image available in the image registry hope everyone enjoyed this session and this is informative to you all please do let me know your comments and feedback via twitter or linkedin or you can even follow me in my blog and thank you so much for watching this session have a great day. Bye.